Over the last 10 years, there has been a trend in the large yacht industry for expedition yachts to be either built or converted from other vessels into expedition yachts. This trend has grown and matured to a point where the expedition yacht really is a separate class of yachts from what we traditionally consider to be luxury yachts. It, it's interesting to note that luxury automakers such as Bentley and Jaguar and even Maserati have gone into the SUV field uh, for their customers. So there's something happening with the uh, clients for luxury automobiles and luxury yachts that they want this kind of rugged functionality and uh, overbuilt vehicle both in their automobile and now in their yacht. So let's just quickly review the large yachts that are expedition yachts and look at their lineage. Uh, Lursen in Germany are several noteworthy expedition yachts, one of them being SCAT. Another one is the 85 meter Pacific and they also built the 90 meter ICE which features two azipod units allowing it to go 18 and a half knots. 75 meter Northern Star is also from Lursen with a range of 6,000 miles. And of course Lursen has their plaque on the side of probably the most famous expedition yacht which is Octopus. At 126 meters and 414 feet, Octopus is still probably the uh, most notable of the expedition yachts. It has landing spaces for two twin turbine helicopters and also a hangar. It also has a 20 meter submarine on board. Here's some of the other uh, purpose-built expedition yachts from different shipyards out of Europe. Now alongside these uh, expedition yachts that were purpose-built, that were designed and built as new vessels, are some very well-known and very well-respected conversions of commercial vessels. Behind me you can see the 70-meter Shurikan being converted in the Icon shipyard in Holland. It is a spectacular yacht. One of the most well-known expedition vessels is the 77-meter Legend which was originally built uh, as a Russian salvage vessel. The 87 meter Arctic, and it was converted from an ice class tow and salvage vessel. Another factor that's probably partially responsible for the uh, emergence of these expedition yachts is that about 15 or 20 years ago, some uh, large mega yachts such as Golden Odyssey were built with a second vessel that would come along with them, uh, which became known as a shadow boat. And these boats carried the water toys, they carried extra staff, they might have security on them, overflow guests. Uh, so for anybody contemplating the ownership of an expedition yacht, uh, early on a decision has to be made whether you go to a yacht yard and you build a custom yacht that has expedition qualities, or whether you decide to go to a commercial shipyard or take a commercial boat and convert it. Yachts built as expedition vessels right now go up to sizes of 115 or 120 meters. As soon as you get uh, north of, let's say, 85 meters, you're in a space where there are a lot of commercial halls that are being built between the 85 meter and the 120 meter range that have capabilities that are equal to or surpass those of the custom yacht builders. And so for our clients that are looking at an expedition yacht, we very often will look at the commercial vessels that are available that can either be built new as a platform and finished as a yacht or purchase one that is uh, six to 10 years old uh, that is somewhat depreciated and converted. And conversions, of course, are very economical compared to a new build. Usually people plan on 36 months for the construction of a new yacht. There can be a period of at least 12 months where the design, the engineering, and the contract negotiation has to take place. You also need to consider whether or not there's a waiting list at the shipyard where you want to build. Commercial and military vessels are built as a series. In the case of this series of 312 foot support vessels, it only takes 12 months from keel laying until launch. Proposition of converting an existing commercial vessel into a world-class expedition yacht is very compelling. The commercial vessels are very often built to a higher standard than yachts are in terms of accomplishing the mission, in terms of their all-weather capabilities, and in terms of the service life that they have to perform it. They need to have very rugged systems that are extremely reliable with backup systems, technically speaking, and operationally. They are very sophisticated vessels. Their bridges are probably more sophisticated and have more advanced electronics than you'll find on a yacht. Those that are considering a conversion, there are two tracks to take. One is 
stick with the existing superstructure as much as you can on one of these conversion boats so that you're not cutting away steel and replacing it. Uh, and that's for somebody that wants a rugged looking boat at a good price. You'll end up with some designs like these, most likely. For other owners that want to match the style of a new build out of Europe, that can be achieved also on a conversion. And here are some of the looks that uh, have been designed that can go onto these hulls. The interiors of almost all yachts are designed and fabricated off-site, very often in Europe, but could be done in the U.S. And they are brought to the vessel at a certain point in the building stage and they're installed on the vessel wherever their vessel is. So you could have an Italian interior, you could have a German or a Dutch interior, and you could install it here in the U.S. and vice versa. So that's a brief overview of uh, these options and how this part of the market, the expedition yacht market, seems to be evolving and how it might be headed. Please get in touch. Uh, we've uh, looked into this quite a bit on behalf of our clients. We have. Uh, pretty good knowledge of what hulls are available, what designs are available, and what the different options are for somebody that would like to have an expedition yacht, either as a new build or as a conversion. So please get in touch if you have interest and uh, we'll be happy to talk to you.